Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Types of Application Attacks, Part 2. Today we're going to begin with a goal of application attacks, and we're going to conclude by divulging weaknesses in some applications. There's a fair amount of information to go over, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with a goal of application attacks. Often the hacker's goal when attacking an application is to create the ability to execute arbitrary code remotely. This is only arbitrary in the sense that the application was not designed to execute the code. If the attacker can gain this ability, the code will often be executed at an administrative account level. Arbitrary code execution or remote code execution represents an extreme security risk as it often has the ability to make changes to the underlying system, giving the hacker control of that system. When this occurs, it can be difficult to discover and stop. It's time to move on to divulging weaknesses in some applications. First up is the cookie. Cookies are text files that web developers use to store information about users. These are stored on the user's local machine. If the cookie is captured, it may reveal sensitive information about either the user or the website. This can lead to a future exploit. Similar to the cookie is the flash cookie, which is also known as an LSO or locally shared object. It's a method that Adobe Flash programmers use to store information on a user's computer. It usually stores information about Flash applications that the user has used on the internet. LSOs can be used to track a user's internet activity and may represent a threat to privacy. Most LSOs remain on a user's system even if all other cookies are deleted. Specific action needs to be taken to remove LSOs from being stored. The attachment or file attachment may also represent a weakness. A file attachment is a document or application that is attached to an email message. Attachments are a commonly used threat vector and they're used to deliver malicious code or applications to a user. Then there's the malicious add-on. An add-on is software that is installed into browsers to allow for additional features. If the add-on causes a deterioration in browser performance, it can be considered malicious. Some add-ons can exploit vulnerabilities present in the browser, creating a security threat. These can also be considered malicious. With header manipulation, hackers can modify the header data of an application in order to change how the application functions. Header manipulation can be used to modify how a web server processes information, or it can be used on file headers to conceal information. Session hijacking usually combines both a network and an application attack. With session hijacking, the hijacker waits until a communication channel has been opened between at least two parties as in an administrator signs into a web server. The hacker then disconnects one of the parties and inserts herself or himself into the communication channel and takes over the session. The attacker typically uses a DOS or denial of service type attack to disconnect one of the parties. Once inserted into the communication flow, the hacker attempts to gain control of either sensitive information or the application itself. That concludes this session on Types of Application Attacks, Part 2. We began with a goal of application attacks, and we concluded with divulging weaknesses in some applications. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.